Hello students, how are you? Welcome back from Suarez Basement, a video podcast created especially for you, those students in the communication media and the art. Today in our quick buy, we have one of you actually. He is an alumni of SUNY Vigo. He was uh, my student from my scriptwriting classes and in many of my video production classes. Seamus Loben is here to talk about his graduation last year, how he moved to New York after graduation. He's working now as a PA, uh, a freelance PA for a production company. So I think it's very good to have this type of conversation so you that are graduating this semester kind of have an idea what is coming next. I think this is a quick buy. Thank you for being here and let's start right away. Uh, tell me a little bit, how was life after graduation and how you end moving to New York City? What, what was the decision factor? Uh, it was pretty awesome. I. I spent the summer working at a summer camp doing photography, videography, kind of out in Bemidji, Minnesota for a all girls camp. And that was actually a really awesome experience. Didn't make a lot of money, kind of broke even really, but it was great to learn and be out there. But it definitely kind of made me realize that I needed to get someplace where I could do the real work and get going on some real goals. So I went home and then went back to my food truck job and that definitely helped kick me in the pants to get down here. And I was lucky enough to have friends who uh, were able to help me financially make this viable and then also gave me a handful of jobs. So I was very, very lucky there. Like for example, that summer camp, even when it wasn't maybe the ideal job, it did help you to put a portfolio together and to get more experience. Is that correct? Yeah. And it, I also, before I went to the camp, I was like applying for jobs down here in the city, knowing that I should probably come here and look here, but I was going through Indeed and I sent out like a hundred applications and heard back from two, one being a summer camp. Mm -hmm. So it was really like, I needed to do something and that was something pretty cool that I could do, but the applying and just hoping someone would get back to me was not working out and it wasn't going to work out. Right. Well, and I think it's better than just stay home, you know, doing nothing that is related with what you study for. Yeah, exactly. Cause yeah. when I do that, it really gets, you just lose energy. You kind of lose the feeling of who you are. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> Um, jobs. Tell me a little bit of what you've been doing, uh, a little bit about your roommate. My understanding is your roommate has been awesome with you in the sense of helping you to find these freelance uh, video production things. So. Yeah, so my roommates are uh, photo focused. They all went to college for photo, but they also, it's obviously pretty much the same thing here, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you start doing some freelance uh, and my understanding is that the last job that you were doing uh, was for this awesome production company in New York, which is well known. Yeah. So I was doing some freelance work here and there uh, for photo stuff. And then I had another friend who is from my hometown, Kendall. And he's been working here for a long time as a camera operator. So he hooked me up with a video production company and I was doing PA work for them on like real small, like four person for crew productions which was really great because I got a ton of experience and got to hang out with them and they were really nice paid me day of which was pretty great and uh, then one of my housemates actually is a manager at Pier 59 which is one of the biggest studios down here so he told me they were hiring he gave me an email to email and then I interviewed a couple times and they, I was really lucky to get hired by them not because of his doing. Right. No, because of your, your talent and your experience, oh, for sure. So I've been working there for a few weeks and then, then this happened. <laughs> I had also been working at the Meredith Corporation in a similar kind of capacity as a photo assistant for their one in-house photographer. So it was like two kind of non-freelance, pretty constant jobs that I was really lucky to pick up. What kind of productions were you involved when you were doing uh, Pierre in, in Pierre 51? 
So at Pier, it was like, I was the one of the nighttime equipment staff. So I wasn't really working on productions. I was, they would, we'd get an order for a studio and then we'd Got build it. a cart with equipment on it. And we'd just kind of fill the studio with all the equipment they had requested. And then we'd do maintenance, we'd test lights, mm-hmm. and then we'd break down, you know, like stuff like that. Right. I think, I think you know, when, when we were in class, and I say this to all my students at some point, is you have to really ask yourself how badly you want to be in this business. This is, this is not a glamorous business whatsoever. Uh, people tend to think that, you know, we, we sell this business as a, you know, you're going to be around famous people. And so, and the truth is, is it's a freaking hard job. It's like you work really, really hard, but you have to ask yourself, is, like, is this really what I want to do? Yeah, yeah I mean, working at Pier, it's awesome because I'm learning a ton and I'm around people who are going to be working and I'm going to be able to help them. They're going to be able to help me. But uh, it is like I go in at 4.30 p.m. And some days I, during like fashion week, I've been told I won't get home until eight in the morning. So mm-hmm. like it's a long, hard days, but it's good money and it's good experience and it's with cool people. So it's, you know. Right. To close our conversation, what do you would say to all those students who are, you know, close to finish their career, close to graduate? Unfortunately, we don't have graduation this year, which sucks. Yeah. Uh, but what do you would tell them? Uh, as far as dealing with, like, this virus and this stuff right now, uh, being creative, obviously, is great. Like, if you have something you're trying to work on and write, this is the perfect time to do it. But if you kind of get stuck... Um, watch stuff about the actual technical parts. Like if you're Mm -mm. stuck on something, watch like videos on not creative processes, not people telling you to like get inspired and just, just work or be creative, like learn the actual techniques, take some time and focus on, if you're talking about lighting, focus on learning about lights and high and low and like, you know, actually learn a few basics and that'll kind of help you get a little inspired to keep working. As far as people graduating and moving into the world, uh, you kind of, it's going to suck for a minute, <laughs> for a while. Uh, but if you have support from nice people and great people, you're, you're going to be fine. Uh, learn how to be present on a set. Mm-hmm. If you're not there and you're not listening and you can't really feel the general direction of the day, people aren't going to want to work with you. Yes. yes. And you're going to fall behind. And uh, uh, let's, let's keep positive thinking. It's still being creative. Go out, do your shooting, write. Uh, anything that you can put your mind and keep your mind occupied, just do it now. And, you know, we have the time. So why not? Yeah, yeah. I've been working on the script I wrote in your class. Uh huh. Uh huh. I love that script, by the way. I think it's awesome. I did change it like a lot. Like, I, rather than being about stand-up comedy, I made it something different because I don't know anything about stand-up comedy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, just when you have it ready, just send it to me and see what. <laughs> <I'm doing on. laughs>